Hi, Peter Rossi again to talk a little more about graphics in R, in particular about the ggplot2 uh, package. This package was uh, written by uh, Hadley Wickham and is one of the most successful and widely used graphics packages in R today. It is a very sophisticated package with tremendous amount of functionality built into it. There's a lot of control over plots. Um, there's a lot of uh, programming ability in the language so that you can essentially write programs in the graphics language. So there's a lot to this package. I'm only going to skim the very, very surface of it. If you want to learn more, I would highly recommend just Googling uh, ggplot tutorial and you'll get to one of these tutor tutor tutorials. There's one by Ramon um, from Basel, uh, Switzerland. That's an excellent tutorial. Again, um, this is not something that you can learn uh, the, uh, in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, if you want to use G the deep aspects of ggplots, there's quite a bit of an investment. But just to make some simple plots that look quite good, it's, it's, it's very simple. So again, remember you need to, to install ggplot2 uh, in your, um, in, in your uh, packages and um, you'll be able to use it. Uh, if you go to the help file for ggplot2, you'll see uh, a really uh, tremendous n uh, number of different um, uh, functions in ggplot2. If you can see them here, there are hundreds of them. So I'm just going to go over one. It's called qplot. qplot stands for quick plot. And qplot is designed to be very, very similar to the regular plot command in base R graphics. So that's a good thing for us. It's very simple. Um, it does the same kinds of things and it has some of the same um, options. So let's just do first do a qplot of price, which is now again, I've loaded the flat panel television set and attached it so that I don't have to write out flat panel underscore TV dollar sign price. Um, so what does that do? Uh, qplot is, tries to be intelligent and says, look, I don't know, what, there's only one variable here. What do I do with one variable? I'll do a histogram. Um, so there is the histogram. Over here, uh, it's filled in in black. Okay, um, not. I don't think it's particularly, uh, uh, you know, astoundingly gorgeous or anything like that. Uh, but it's quite quite usable. Okay, um, so that would be a histogram, and you can see you can change the number, the bin width uh, here, which is some kind of the note how how fine the bins are. There's a default. Um, but uh, it's, 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 it's rather straightforward to use that command. And again, I can put uh, options that I'm familiar with in it, such as uh, ylab equals quote quote, which will get rid of the count label on the y-axis. Um, I can also put a main equals, which is the uh, parameter or argument rather for the title. Uh, this is a histogram. You can see that at Hadley doesn't really like titles, so he doesn't leave much room for them, uh, but there it is. This is a histogram right here on top of my histogram. Okay, um, now some options will work in a somewhat unpredictable way. So if I say qplot price color equals, say, red, thinking that I'd like to have a red filled histogram, it won't do that. It looks like it tried to draw the lines around each bar in red, and then it put a legend here. So there's a, some things that are a little bit cute. Oh, okay, let's try price a fill equals red. So that'll actually fill the, the, uh, the histogram bars with red, or at least Hadley's version of red, which just looks a little bit like salmon color to me. Uh, but he's also put this legend over here. So by default, qplot is thinking that the fill variable, the fill values could actually be related to another variable. So we'll come back to that. So that's a, made possibly a little annoying. Okay, now what about a scatter plot? Well, qplot, if you put in two variables, it will by default do a scatter plot. So here is the scatter plot it defaults to of price versus size, and they, it tries to put a grid on there to make it a little a little easier to read, a little sexier, what have you. Um, that's nice. Um, now, now there is in the background uh, this variable called brand. Um, and one nice thing, if we did, let's try. Suppose we try to plot, but denote the brands. Well, we can denote them in various ways. But if I just said color equals brand, what it will do is assign uh, 
colors to each brand. And you can see here we have um, uh, the different colors here corresponding to Samsung, Panasonic, and LG brands. So it's actually a very nice way of, of, um, of putting on top of it um, a, um, a displaying essentially different scatter plots for the different brands. Um, so that's a nice, nice feature. Uh, you might also uh, want to do a separate scatter plot for each brand, and that can be done by Qplot, size, price, and there's a, an option called facets, or an argument called facets, which is um, what should determine, so you can think of a, an array of graphs, each element of the array is called a facet, and those facets should be determined or selected on the basis of brand. And now we have actually a different uh, graph here for each, separately for each of the brands. Okay, so that's kind of a cool thing. Um, let's go back to the regular scatter plot. And there it is. Now suppose we wanted to add a line to it. Um, what you, you can do that in a variety of ways. Um, so I can do this by Q plot size price and specify what's called a geometry, geometry parameter and that's going to be points, meaning plot the points, but also plot a smooth line on there and tell it that the method for smoothing is LM. No geometry point. So now I've, it's plotted um, the, all the scatter, same scatter plot as before, but it actually put a fitted line. This is the blue fitted line. And this shaded region here is something we haven't got to yet in the course, but is actually the um, margin of fit error in the plot. So that's kind of a nice thing it does automatically for you if you'd like. Um, you might also, for example, want to do a um, histogram uh, in such a way that it, it colors um, each um, brand separately in the counts. So if you do that qplot of price and color equals brand, you will now get uh, the histogram, oops, sorry, fill equals brand. You will get a histogram that you can see the constituent por portions of each count that are of the three different brands. So you have red here for LG, there's the green or the Panasonic, and then the Samsung is on the top. So you can kind of see the composition, if you will, um, by price point uh, with respect to each brand. So again, that's a very brief introduction to, 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 to Qplot. Uh, Qplot also supports um, a, an idea that's called transparency so that it's possible to plot points so that when they overlap, uh, they, they, they're, they overlap in tra transparent colors and they build up transparent colors to look a little denser. So I will return to some of these more advanced ideas with another video, but I just wanted to show people uh, ggplot2. You can see it's very powerful and very easy to quickly generate um, a large number of plots that look pretty professional without too much effort on our part. Um, so I'd encourage people to use ggplot2. Right now, please stick to the qplot command. There's a general ggplot command, which is quite sophisticated, um, takes a little bit of extra effort. So start simple. I think you'll be um, in good shape. Okay, um, signing off for now.